Okay, growth hormone um, start. Let's assume the growth hormone has been approved for your child. Now we are going to start on growth hormone. So typically we'll make you come over here and we'll have a growth hormone trainer uh, to do the growth hormone training for you about how to give the shot. Growth hormone is an injection given underneath the skin called subcutaneous shot and it's given every single day, seven days a week, 365 days and the treatment goes on for several years until the bones fuse when no more growth is possible and after which we'll reevaluate the child to see whether there's a chance of adult growth hormone deficiency because a small percentage of children will go on to be adults who have growth hormone deficiency too. In adults, the use of growth hormone is for other reasons other than growing tall. It's for the bones to stay stronger, for the cholesterols to remain normal, the muscle tone to be normal, to avoid fatigue, and to have your um, heart function properly. So the usefulness for growth hormone in adults is slightly different. So the growth hormone which your child will be getting is a synthetic growth hormone, meaning it is made um, and not extracted from a human being. However, the chain of proteins, it's a protein, it's not a steroid, it, the chain of protein is exactly like it's in the body. Protein so are usually chains of amino acids attached to each other. There are 191 amino acids in a human growth hormone chain. And in this synthetic growth hormone, it is essentially the same. It is made by a DNA recombinant technology and to be very much similar to how uh, the human growth hormone is. Because of that, um, the antibodies against this growth hormone are relatively rare. Doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Sometimes you can re develop resistance to this growth hormone, but it's usually rare. What are all the side effects of growth hormone? Since it is very similar to human growth hormone and we are replacing growth hormone instead of supplementing growth hormone, essentially the side effects of growth hormone are relatively low. In my cells, two decades of practicing medicine, pediatric endocrinology having started more than 500 children on growth hormone, I very rarely see side effects. Having said that, doesn't mean a child will not get side effects. So we have to keep an eye on it. I would strongly urge for you to open the product information and learn about all the side effects which can be associated with growth hormone. I also ask you to go to the websites called Magic Foundation or Human Growth Foundation or our website sackkid.com to look at side effects as reported by the drug companies and FDA which can be associated with growth hormone. Having said that, the few things which I really want you to look for is constant headaches, dizziness, blurry vision because sometimes you can develop fluid behind the eyeballs called a pseudo tumor cerebri. These are reversible effects. So if the headache is persistent or blurry vision is persistent, call us and we might have to stop the growth hormone and restart on growth hormone. The other major side effect which I hear about is joint pains, arthritis or arthralgias. There's also a condition called as uh, slipped femoral epiphysis. Slipped femoral epiphysis is a condition where the hip or the knee pain can be the presenting symptom for the child. In this situation, the child can have a limping which happens and the limping can be because of this um, epiphysis or the head of the bone slipping away from the socket. In these situations, we have to stop growth hormone and we will not be able to stop start the growth hormone again. In rare situations, the child may have to have a surgery. So the earlier we find out, the better it is for us. The growth hormone is contraindicated. If your child has sleep apnea, it is contraindicated while the child is in the hospital. If there is any active malignancy or active cancer or tumors, we cannot use growth hormone. However, we can use growth hormone in children who have had cancer in the past and they've been disease free for more than a year. You cannot give growth hormone if there is active cancer. Other than that, you also have to follow up for insulin resistance because 
um, type 2 diabetes is a possibility because insulin resistance increases during growth hormone therapy. All these things will be followed up on a regular basis and you have to communicate with your physicians on a regular basis. That is one of the most important reasons why your appointments have to be kept and the child has to be followed up every three months. In the next video, we'll be talking about how the follow-ups are arranged. Thank you.